The last thing we need to understand before we jump into writing the blog is share triggers. These are proven techniques that increase social shares by increasing the value to the reader. These writing styles are of course great for blog posts, but they're also great to have in mind when you're writing your books and your emails. First is utility, and this means practicality. Make your post as useful as possible. Find a problem that your target market have and then write out the solution. Utility is why recipes are some of the most highly shared types of content online at the moment. The next one is length. 3,000 word articles are much more likely to be shared. The reasoning is that long articles can create a feeling of awe and the reader wants to share that feeling of awe with everyone they know. But this doesn't mean that you can post 3,000 words of utter rubbish and people will love it regardless. In order to get the feeling of awe, they need to be interested enough to read it to the end. Memory glue. Most content online is forgettable. And if you don't believe me, quickly list the last five articles you read online. I tried this and I can't. Even posts with high utility or ones that are long enough to invoke a sense of awe still get forgotten. Memory glue is when you put something in there that's weird and wonderful enough to help it stick in people's minds. And this makes it much more likely to be shared too. For example, if I think back to content that I do remember, I think of Ramit's finance blog, his posts stick in my mind because his voice always comes across so well in this writing. I can hear him talking in my head and it's like he's in the room. Another post I think of is one written by Eden Ashley. She wrote about how not buying any new clothes made her happier than the year before. The reason this stuck with me was because her polarizing opinion broke the norm, especially when it seems like every other blogger out there is essentially saying, buy this and you'll be happy. And I think of the Going Zero Waste blog. If you haven't heard of the Zero Waste movement, it's a group of people who are trying to cut down on their waste the most they possibly can. And there's quite a few big bloggers out there who have managed to get their waste down into these tiny little mason jars. And they're saying that this is the only trash that they've created for the last one, two, three years. These jars catch a lot of media attention and they're really inspiring. And they make you think, yes, I can totally do this too. Until you actually start trying to cut down and you realize that plastic is everywhere and you're never gonna be 100% zero waste or fit your yearly trash into a mason jar unless you move to the wild or something. Anyway, that's where I was when I was feeling pretty disheartened and then I stumbled across this going zero waste post. She wrote about how she had this trash jar and it got a lot of media attention, but actually it's all bullshit. She has way more trash that she hasn't put in the jar for X, Y, and Z reasons. And that everyone with a jar always excludes something, whether it's contacts, broken glass, condoms, whatever. And then she wrote this really great speech about how no one is perfect and all that matters is that you're trying and that zero waste is about a journey, not a destination and every day that you're cutting down a tiny bit, that's the whole point. The whole point isn't to fit everything into a jar. That's just something that the media's picked up on, but it's not what the movement is actually about. For me, this is the post that has the most memory glue. I felt like it was written just for me. It was a huge aha moment, motivational, and it broke the norm. Positive emotions. Positive content is more likely to be shared than negative content, simply because people don't like feeling sad and they don't want their friends to feel sad either. As demonstrated with my last example, if you can give people a happy feeling, they're more likely to remember you and share you. Social currency. This is when people share your content because it makes them look good. Let's say for example, you are a huge advocate for veganism and you read an article that summarizes a research study. This study found that vegans are more likely to lose weight and live longer. What are you gonna do? You're gonna share the article. Sure, there's some utility in it, people can switch to veganism, but the number one reason that you're sharing it is because it supports your position, it makes you look good in front of your peers, and it proves that you're right. Because at the end of the day, people love finding something on the internet that reflects their own morals or their own opinions back at them. And the final one is storytelling. Humans are hardwired to love stories. It's how we've learned lessons for generations. For example, you might not be able to remember the name of the last share trigger, but I'm pretty sure you'll remember the diet that I used as an example. That's because stories are far more powerful, 
memorable and emotional than just pure information. Stories can also be a great form of memory glue and they can stir up positive emotions.